The Bible says, and the voice of harpers and musicians. Okay, so then you'll notice it's a whole uh, music industry. And it's arts, people who major in the arts over here. Voice of harpers. So then there are harpers who sing with their voices. Musicians, that's a no-brainer. So uh, if the rapture happens tomorrow, we can bet, our, we can bet on it that we're going to see uh, Lady Gaga down here being one of those. Uh, and of pipers, so people who play the pipes. And trumpeters, people who pay, play the trumpets, shall be heard no more at all in thee. So I'm not going to explain again why it is Rome. We know for a matter of fact through so many verses that this is talking about Rome. As the Roman Catholic Church burns to the ground, uh, the Bible says that their musicians are not going to be heard anymore in them. Now, that's why some people believe that Babylon is America, because they major in the music industry. But uh, again, that logic is not going to work, because the reason why is that the Bible says that, that uh, literally their business world, participating in the business world, the merchandise, uh, economics, of this particular city is a sin. Now obviously all of us are participating in the economics of this country so it can't be America. But it would make more sense if, if you're participating and contributing money to the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah, I don't have a clean conscience working for the Catholic Church, can you? <laughs> if there's a job that you don't want to receive, it's working for the Catholic Church. So as the Catholic Church burns to the ground, um, they have musicians. Now, is that true then? Yeah, it is very true. A lot of people don't really pay attention to Hollywood. They only look at Jews, that's it. And then they put all the blame on the Jews, and then, you know, that's the reason why that Jews will run all the world. That's what they're going to keep thinking. And then if you say that God will restore the nation of Israel, the Jewish people, then they think you're Antichrist. No, it is Antichrist that you're against the Jews, because remember the Jews, they repent and they turn to God. Be, uh, during the tribulation. The enemy is actually the Roman Catholic Church. It's Roman power. If you pay attention to Hollywood, you really don't pay attention to religious backgrounds, do you? If you look at religious backgrounds, you'd be surprised how many musicians, and I mean singers, they're Catholic. Right. You'd be surprised how many of them, uh, they may not be practicing Catholic, but they were raised from Catholic, or they'll have Catholic connection, or they're sympathetic toward Catholic. Right, famous directors, Martin Scorsese, uh, Catholic background, Liam Neeson, uh, Catholic background. By the way, uh, uh, it's very interesting. He played in the movie Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, if you see, uh, I watched that film, and that was the first time I saw Liam Neeson because I'm such a very spiritual person compared to all of you who watched Star Wars Episode One: Phantom of the... Oops, I just gave myself away. But <laughs> anyway, no, I'm just kidding. But the... Um, but Liam Neeson, he uh, played uh, at Pilgrim's Progress, and he also said his favorite preacher, you wouldn't guess, Ian Paisley. Wow. Yeah, I, I was surprised about that. It's, it's very interesting. But anyway, aside from that, yeah, the thing is, is that you'd see a lot of them having Catholic background, actually. Catholic background. Let's keep reading over here. So don't just look at Jews. Do, uh, when you look at bankers and Hollywood, start to see Roman Catholic, and you'd be very surprised how much they dominate, how much they overrun a lot of things. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be. So then the people who, do, uh, who are craftsmen, who major in crafts, whatever craft that they're involved in shall be found any more in thee. So it's not going to be there. It's not, you're not going to find a trace of them. I'll tell you what, who majors a lot in the crafts because they make money off of it. And those are Catholic images. See, Catholic images. So guess what? The Lord, he's definitely sending judgment upon the great whore where they will not be damning souls. They're not going to be damning souls. All right, let's keep reading over here. And the sound of the millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. So notice over here that uh, the millstone, the sound of it, it's not going to be heard anymore. Now, um, if I'm going to think about millstones operating in our day and age, 
I mean, you're going to think it's more and more rare because of technology. But uh, I can think of, uh, so then how, what's the explanation over here, right? So again, it can go to two things. So then uh, it can be figurative or metaphorical, meaning that the sound of uh, their food economics or food industry running is not going to be operating anymore. But this is not impossible. This could be possible, where they're doing millstones during the tribulation. So then, uh, what's the possibility? Well, you know, if I'm going to think of a country that can still do that, especially when you think about Italian food, you know, they might be using that. I know they'd use a lot of old-fashioned tools still. That way they can produce genuine Italian uh, meals. So that can make a lot of sense over there. All right. Let's look at Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 25. That's why you see more and more that Rome makes a better candidate. You see that? Honestly, when you go verse by verse, honestly, when you go verse by verse in Revelation 17, 18, I mean, Rome is the best candidate. The Catholic Church system is the best candidate. There's no doubt about that. It's not America. And it's not the nation of Israel. There are just too many contradictions. All right. Now, remember this. I mentioned that we might return over here one day. Let's look at the book of Jeremiah. And then uh, we're going to look at chapter 25. Verse 9. Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadrezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant, and will bring them against this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and an hissing and perpetual desolations. Moreover, notice over here, uh, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstones and the light of the candle, and this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Uh, let's keep reading verse 12. And it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans and will make it perpetual desolations. And I will bring upon that land all my words which I have pronounced against it, even all that is written in this book which Jeremiah hath prophesied against all the nations." For many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of them also, and I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. Now, this is something that you want to pay attention to. This proves that uh, Babylon cannot be Israel. Okay, so pay attention, okay? So let's return over here. Compare this with Revelation 18, okay? Compare this with Revelation 18. Now, we only have three chapters. Do you realize that? That um, after 18 is over, that we only have like four chapters left yep. of Revelation? Yeah, so cherish the moment while well, you still can. Pay yeah. attention. Write notes as much as you can. Yeah, this is, uh, it's an amazing book, Revelation. The, probably the most favorite book out of all the books in the Bible for a majority of Christians, right? So pay attention. All right. Revelation 18.22 said, The last part, sound of a millstone, heard no more at all in thee, right? Remember Jeremiah 25 says that? Yes. Now keep, look at verse 23. Does this sound familiar with Jeremiah 25? And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, right? And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee, right? Yeah, that matches with, go back, Jeremiah 25, right? Look at verse 10. See, uh, if you look at Jeremiah 25, verse 10, voice of mirth, voice of gladness, voice of the bridegroom, voice of the bride, sound of millstones, light of the candle, boom, 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 match Revelation 18. And some people might say, some might say this, some might say, it's <coughs> true, excuse me. Thank you. This is referring to the nation of Israel, though, Pastor. Ah, but look at this. It's already been fulfilled at verse 11. Verse 11, yeah, okay, verse 10, sure, it might be talking about Jerusalem, but at verse 11, God says uh, that was already accomplished during the 70 years of captivity under Babylon. Now, God, he's not going to forget Babylon, right? 
So what does he say? He says, if you read verse 12 and 13, what will he do with Babylon? All the judgment that he pronounced, which was 10 and 11, right? Uh, excuse me, not, um, verse 10, right? All the judgments he pronounced, that one at verse 10, he's going to return it to Babylon. He can't do it back at the nation of Israel. See that? It can't be Jerusalem. So this is proof Jerusalem is different from Babylon. Why? Because if you read Jeremiah 25, Babylon is not Jerusalem. Babylon conquers Jerusalem, one. And number two, Babylon receives its judgment, not, is, not Jerusalem. Because they already fulfilled their judgment. How about that? That book is amazing. All right. Let's uh, return. Uh, if you look at uh, verse 13, the wording is so similar with Revelation 18. You'll notice prophesied. See that at verse 13? You'll notice verse 14, according to their deeds, right? Mm -hmm. Revelation 18, double what? Reward her according to what she did, right? I mean, uh, look at verse 12, desolation, right? Mm -hmm. That matched with Revelation 18 about desolation. Verse 9, desolation. Etc. All right, let's return to Revelation 18. Revelation 18. There's no doubt that all of this is matching up over here. Now, I find this very interesting. We're not gonna. We're not going to really mention it right now, but later on, I will in this teaching, in this lesson. But later on, what you're going to find out is that up in heaven, there is going to be a marriage supper of the Lamb. The voice of the bridegroom and the bride say, come. Look at Revelation 22. Keep your hand in Revelation 18. Go to Revelation 22. At the marriage supper of the Lamb, the bride is the church. It's not Israel. It's the church. Look at Revelation chapter 22. Notice what the Bible says about the voice of the bridegroom and the bride. If you look at Revelation uh, chapter 22, verse uh, 17, And the Spirit and the bride say what? Come. come. And let him that hears say come, and let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. See that? Amen. So notice over here that the... Uh, Bride and the bridegroom, they bid them to come. Look at chapter 21. Chapter 21. Uh, we're going to look at chapter 21, and then we'll read verse, uh, let's see over here. Verse 9. There came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. Uh, you notice over here that there's this invitation from the bride and the bridegroom. There's that invitation shown. So, whereas, uh, where over here there's the voice of the bridegroom and the bride bidding them to come, you're going to notice that when you return to chapter 18 and then verse 22, not for the Roman Catholic Church. See that? At the Roman Catholic Church, the voice is all gone. The voice is all gone of the bridegroom and the bride. You might say, why is that? The reason why is because, see, Satan, he always tries to what? Imitate God. Yeah. Imitate God. Now, here's something that you want to know this. This is going to be enlightening. This might help you with your studies in the future. So, the Roman Catholic Church is the bride of Satan. Uh, Dr. Rutman, he used to have a sign over his car, is your church the bride of Satan? You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, the bride of Satan was first, listen up now, notice that their wedding, their kingdom, was first before God. Did you notice that? Satan's wedding, which is imitating God, was first before God. Notice that Satan's kingdom during the seven years of tribulation, or however long you want to put it, during that timeline, his kingdom on earth was first before God. 
He's trying to imitate God. So when you hear these liberal scholars try to point out myths or manuscripts that are older than the Bible, they use as an argument that, see, the Christians or the Jews, Old Testament Jews, they're copycatting from the pagans. No. How do you not know that Satan, he was trying to imitate God, so he did it first? Amen. That is what you're going to notice throughout your entire Bible. Satan will try to do something first, and then God's people will do it later. That doesn't mean that God's people were copycatting the devil's people. No, it's the devil's people were copycatting. The devil was copycatting God. Right. But he wanted to make his people do it first so that what? He can claim copyright. See, I did it first, so uh, I'm the legitimate heir. That's Satan. You know why? Because he's a thief. He's a thief. So you've got to watch out for that. I mean, look, isn't that an issue today? It's still an issue today about copyright issues. There are people who did not genuinely make the product themselves, and then so, so, uh, so then what they would do is that they would steal that and copyright it for themselves and say, see, I'm the creator of it, you know? And that's why Facebook had its issues, and then there was a fight going on between them. See, if that's normal during modern times, you don't think that's common sense during ancient times with the Bible and pagan myths? See, so to say that the oldest is more legitimate, it's more uh, accurate, no, because if we're going to use that argument, then there's going to be a lot of unfair things going on yeah. concerning copyright issues, etc. That's good, brother. Okay, uh, let's return to our main text, Revelation chapter 18, verse 23. So then notice that Satan's marriage uh, is destroyed, it's ruined. As a matter of fact, you'll notice what's very interesting. Remember Revelation 17? Satan's children turn against the mother. So then you got these ten kings, right? So then the ten demoniacs, they betray the mother and whoever they are, you know, I don't know uh, whoever they are. Maybe one of them is Bill Gates and Soros and I don't know, Fauci. I don't know, you know, maybe, maybe one of them. I think they're so lower tired, so I don't think that they're, they're really up there. But... Let's just say that because I just want to say that because I'm mad at them. But anyway, so um, when, when, these, uh, when these globalists over here, these ten kings, they betray the mother and Satan betrays his wife. Now notice that's why Satan's family, if you join his network, you don't want to join it. You don't want to join his network because he'll betray you. All he wants to do is see you burn and fry in hell. Be as miserable and sad like him when he burns in hell. He hates you, okay? But that's the total opposite of God with his marriage. His children are invited. They're, uh, they're eternally secured. And his wife is the body of Jesus Christ and he can never betray her. So it baffles my mind when you get saved believers today talking about God betraying his bride and beating up his bride during the tribulation and that you can lose your salvation. I, would you like to make God the devil then? So this, uh, this teaching is heresy when you talk about the church going through the tribulation. This teaching is heresy when you say once saved and always saved is false, is heresy. No, that, you're heresy for saying that. When you talk about losing salvation, that is heresy. When you talk about lordship salvation, the pea and tulip of Calvinism, perseverance of the saints, you're wrong and that's heresy. That's demonic. That is absolutely demonic because you're saying that God will treat his children, his bride, the same way that Satan and his children will do. All right, that was good preaching. Let's, let's look at verse 23. Let's look at verse 23. The light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. So there's going to be no more lights in them, right? What, now, look, what screams candles, okay? What screams candles? Isn't the Roman Catholic Church? Yeah. I mean, you can see like every moment over here. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. So bridegroom and bride, their voices aren't going to be heard anymore. So I mentioned to you before Satan and his bride, right? That welcome invitation is going to be found no more at all. But this could also apply to regular wedding ceremonies. 
what church practices that, right? What city practices that? Roman Catholic Church. This, you can see a lot of religious ceremonies in here, not just secular, monetary, economic systems. This is religious and secular system combined for one city, and there's only one city you can think of as the best candidate out of the entire world, and that is Vatican City. That's Rome. 